G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel, continuing this new series I've got where I'm going through all 18 teams in the league and having an attempt at trying to plot what their best 22, or more correctly, best 24 I've done, uh, will look like three years from now. So in other words, the round one of 2027. So uh, this has been a fun little process. I've done Western Bulldogs, West Coast, Sydney St Kilda, and today we are doing the Richmond Football Club, who uh, you know present as one of the more interesting ones to try and predict where they're going to be in three years. Uh, having said that, I probably shouldn't have used the word predict because one thing I want to make clear is that uh, as part of this process, I'm not trying to predict exactly what's going to happen in three years. It's more just mapping out or forecasting what their best 22 would look like right now. Obviously, if there is no trades um, or anything like that, I have forecast some retirements, so that would be helpful. And I'll go into a bit de a bit more detail about you know how experienced certain players will be on their list. On average, I'm probably removing you know five or six potential retirees over a three-year period. With Richmond, there is as many as eight or nine as I can see on my screen there, uh, which I'll go through in a minute and trying to predict what their strengths and weaknesses are and roughly how competitive the team will be in three years. Again, allowing for no trades or drafting in that time. So if you're unaware, uh, this is the second video series where I've done a profile on each team. I did a current one uh, looking at every team ahead of 2024. Uh, there is a Richmond version of that as well, as well as a playlist where you can find that video series called Team Based Videos for 2024, and then a new playlist including uh, tw best 22s of teams in three years from now. So if you are enjoying the content, I would ask you to consider subscribing to the channel. I have goals of trying to get to this uh, channel to 25,000 subscribers uh, by the end of the month. And I think I'm about 200 short as I record this. So if you are enjoying the content and want to see footy and cricket content, uh, cricket mostly during this off season, then uh, this is the place to subscribe. Cool, let's get into the Richmond Football Club. Obviously we see an interesting list with uh, you know a lot of aging players and uh, not a huge amount of access to young talent. Obviously, uh, much has been said of the Toronto Hopper deals where they traded out of two drafts and now currently sit with a bunch of speculative talents that may or may not be good, but as an outsider looking in, it's a little bit hard to forecast and, and even some of the better ones uh, haven't played a lot of football. So mapping this out was actually quite difficult, but we're gonna start this process by eliminating players that are likely to have been retired by the end of 2026. So um, there's no hard and fast rule about how I went th through this, but uh, I'll, I'll tell you the ones that I think will be gone. Dustin Martin will be 36, I've eliminated him. Dylan Grimes and Marlian Pickett will be 35. Sam Naismith, who I know hasn't played a game from yet, but at 34, probably not gonna be on the list anymore. Dion Prestia will be 34, Tom Lynch will be 34, and bearing in mind that will be the year they turn 35. Uh, Nathan Broad at 33 is a slight chance of being there. So is Camden McIntosh, but I have put them down as retirements. Again, bearing in mind, it will be the year they turn 34 and the year they turn 33. And considering as well, Richmond's list transition, it's probably gonna see them not sign on to players that old. However, I have retained a few players over 30. I thought long and hard about Vlastrin. Um, he is 32 turning 33 in 2017. I've kept him in. I just think he strikes me as the sort of player that could play uh, a little bit deep into his career, um, which is probably true of some of those other ones as well, but he is you know, a year or two younger and they won't necessarily get rid of all their veterans. So I've kept him. I've also kept, kept Toby Nankervis at 32 and Jaden Short, who will be 31 in round one of the 2027 season. So with that in mind, those are the players that I've eliminated and retained. I'm gonna show you the best 24 that I can muster. But again, this one is really difficult for Richmond, uh, but I'll get it up as follows. So uh, I'm going to explain what the colors and numbers mean in every video, because I know not everyone watches every video. Um, so to explain what it is, obviously that's the best 24. I decided to flesh it out to 24 to have a little bit more of a deeper analysis. Um, but first of all, colors more or less indicate my confidence of how likely it is that that player is going to be in the best 22 three years from now. Uh, it's not a hard and fast rule and not something that we should really get too caught up in. Uh, but for instance, you know, Taranto, Gibkus, even though he hasn't played a lot of football, I feel like as a first round prospect and from what we've seen, he'll probably be there. Kaczynski and Samson Ryan, again, were a little trickier because I'm not 100% sure they're going to be stars. But again, it's more about whether they're going to be in this 22 specifically. Uh, so I do think I, I made those guys green. By comparison, you know, some of their better young prospects like Tom Brown and Sam Banks. I think Tom Brown's played one game and Sam Banks has played about six. So, I, I decline to make them green uh, just yet. Um, so that's what the colors mean. And the numbers, uh, if you can't guess, the first number is their age 
of um, what of round one 2027. So if they're born in the first three months of the year, they're going to be a year older, if that makes sense. And the second number is my estimated games experience by then, which I think is relevant because we're also trying to ascertain how mature this list is going to be, or at least this best 24, um, and therefore their competitiveness. So uh, the, the how I've estimated it, it's, it's not a great way of doing it. I roughly estimated that if they're best 22 over the next three years, then I'll give them 20 games a season uh, in line with you know potential for injuries and suspension. So if they're best 22 for the next three years, I've added 60. If they're, if I'm not sure how many games they're gonna go, I've kind of just like done less, if that makes sense. So Tom Brown, like I don't know if he starts round one this year and plays all 60 games for the next three years. So I just gave him a 45, you know. So again, I'd just like to reiterate, the, the point of this is not a prediction as such. We're trying to map out, you know, what are the strengths and weaknesses of this, of this team? What are their holes? Um, and we'll go through it line by line. So to start off with, I think that back line there is definitely going to be the strongest aspect of this team. You know, assuming there's no uh, recruiting over the next three years, which there will be. But looking at it now, you know, Gibkiss and Bolter with Tyler Young. Tyler Young's still speculative. He, he has played well in the games we've seen from him this year, but he's not a lock. So I've got him in yellow there. But Gibkiss and Bolter, I'm pretty confident. That being said, I do understand that there's a possibility that Gibkiss or Bolter could be developed as a key forward. Because if you look down the bottom of the, or the middle of, the, of this lineup, the key forward position is one I am not able to lock in with any confidence. But I've put them in their rightful or current positions as key defenders. Dan Rioli and Jaden Short will still be best 22 players comfortably. Tom, Grant, Tom Brown I have a good feeling about, but you know, so I've chucked him in a back pocket there. Could he push up in a wing? I'm not sure, but he was the best option for that spot. So the back line, I'm pretty comfortable with that. Uh, I think there is a good um, level of talent there. Behind those guys, you know, there's guys like Caleb Smith, James Trezise, Ben Miller, uh, that I just didn't quite have it on the bench there. I got Ralph Smith as well, Vlostrin. Uh, I've put him on the bench. Uh, again, he's only in yellow because I don't know if he's going to be there. So there was a bit of that. It's obviously not it's not that I don't rate him. So let's talk about the center line. Um, you got Taranto, Hopper, and I've chucked Jack Graham in the midfield there because I know he's kind of like a forward mid. But by that point of his career, with an absence of you know established midfield talent on this list as it currently stands... I could see him transitioning to be a bit more of a full-time midfielder. I could see him being a good one too. Um, so let's just assume that he, he is a midfielder here because there weren't any other clear options there. You know, the next best was maybe T uh, Thompson Dow and Tyler Sonzi. And I thought Jack Graham makes more sense there. And there's probably also more forward talents on the list currently to backfield Graham as a flanker. So yeah, looking at that, that on-ball division, Taranto, Hopper, and Graham, the talent's good. That's fine. They're all at the back end of their prime though. And that's kind of a trend of this team. There's not too many players in this forecast who are right in the middle of their prime they're sort of at the back end of it or still about to become to join their prime so it's, it's a weird transitional period that Richmond are facing I think but Sam Banks I've got on the wing I know he's kind of drafted as a running defender but could he play more as a wingman potentially I'm not going to lie and say I know a whole heap about him other than the fact that he seems to have a bit about him and uh, as uh, playing as a wingman there's there seems to be a bit of a future there but I think he'll be in the 22 anyway so that's the midfield, obviously, with Nank still as the Ruckman. The forward line, um, yeah. So this one this one was tricky for me. So Liam Baker and Shea Bolton are clearly going to be there, in my opinion, certainly on talent. Kaczynski, you know, again, is he a lock to become a gun key forward? Not necessarily. Uh, I think he's got a bit about him, uh, but he's still a bit of a wait and see. His record up to date is still pretty solid. Um, what has he kicked about? A goal a game from his first 50 games. You know, I think that stacks up all right. Uh, but I've chucked him in green because I think when you consider the lack of key forwards on this list... The chances of them replacing him, also with Tom Lynch gone, uh, you know, I think he's fairly safe. He's going to be in the best 22 in three years. But again, this is all a little bit arbitrary. So I got Kaczynski there, and as a full forward, you know, it was between Jacob Bauer, who's 192 centimeters and played a handful of games and a bit more mature than Liam Fawcett. But other than that, unless I'm missing someone, there's a guy called Matej Kalina who uh, I just heard about for the first time. Uh, 213 centimeters. Uh, I think he's an American uh, like player that they've got playing in their VFL. Bit of a ruck forward, I don't know. 213 centimetres, just slap him in the ruck, seriously. But, you know, my point there being that the key forward options are a bit light. So that's something they're going to have to draft for. Uh, so I went with Bauer over Fawcett purely because, you know, I don't know. And to be honest, I challenge even Richmond fans to say they know the answer for who's going to fill that spot. It's way too early. Uh, but Samson Ryan, I'm pretty comfortable with. I think he looks like a good young ruck forward prospect for what he's shown to date. I'm fairly, fairly comfortable putting him in his best 22. I think he's a he's a good good prospect for them to have on their list. 
And uh, at 26 at this point, he'll, he'll be in his prime, which is nice. Judson Clark, I put in yellow only because, you know, he's only played, hmm, I want to say his game's tally is probably in the teens. Um, so again, I didn't feel confident putting him in green. However, I think he's shown enough to suggest he's probably going to be the small forward of this forward line with Liam Baker being maybe more of a high half forward. So the forward line has question marks. He's got some talent, no doubt. Liam Baker and Shea Bolton. And I, I like Samson Ryan and there's, there's talent there from Kaczynski. But on the whole, it, it looks like it needs work, which, you know, the point of this exercise is to identify specifically where the need work. And I'd say the forward line and the midfield, certainly. And uh, But I do like their key backs generally. The bench is filled with some speculative ones. And that's kind of just, like I said before, the nature of Richmond's list at the moment is that there are some young guys, but they're all very speculative that we just don't know too much about. And we've seen a bit of Ralph Smith. We've seen a bit of Cumberland. I don't, are they going to be on the list? Probably on the list, maybe. But, you know, are they going to be best 22 established AFL players three years from now? Still remains to be seen. Um, but I do think both of them at times have shown some good AFL traits. Tyler Sonzi, again, also he's played 10 games, I think, maybe less. Uh, I didn't memorize all the game tallies, sorry. I think he's played 10 games. Uh, again, speculative. You know, small-bodied midfielder. Looked like he was talented in his draft year. Um, you know, hasn't really, you know, proven yet that he's going to be there. So I think that's fair enough. Thompson Dow, similar. And uh, Ryan Mansell was actually someone I forgot to mention in my last video. And that's kind of what's been helpful doing. Looking at lists for a second time uh, is helping me get more of a well-rounded view. Because I, uh, you know, you, you miss something the, the first time and you'll pick it up the second time. Um, so those are kind of the next best players. The other players I've missed out. Oliver Hayes-Brown is a young ruck prospect. I talked about Kalina already. Uh, but other than that, outside this 22 right now, the only other midfielder I could find that's a legitimate midfielder was Kane McAuliffe, who they've just drafted. So surprise, surprise, they're going to need to draft a midfielder or two or three. So there's some forward options that are not talls. Uh, Matt Coulthard, I've left out of this team, but he could be there. Even Morris Rioli Jr., you know, he's, he's fluctuated, looking good at times and, and not really established himself in this team. So, you know, he just missed out versus a Ralph Smith, who I think, I don't know, it's kind of line ball. And again, I'm an outsider looking in. And Steely Green, um, you know, as a, I think somebody clarified for me in the comments that he's a midfielder forward, whereas I thought he was a defender pre-draft. Um, speculative late draft pick. From what I know of him, I have a mutual friend with Steely, uh, like his fitness coach. He seems to be like a pretty driven guy, so I'm kind of rooting for Steely Green from a distance. He, he doesn't know who I am, but I kind of know who he is. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. But overall, I think there's just a lack of clear talent that they can rely on. There's, there's some speculative types, guys with a bit of talent. We like the look of him in flashes, uh, but nothing for them to really hang their hat on, which... I know I'm not telling Richmond fans anything they don't already know, but I'm just obviously trying to be honest with the analysis. And it's not to say that this, this 22 will not look the same in three years. You know, whether or not... So I've predicted Richmond in the bottom four this year. And that is line ball. Like, I know that's speculative. They could easily finish way higher than that. I've talked about their draft pick situation. They've accumulated a lot of seconds and third rounders. They can use that to get high draft picks. So... Regardless, we know Richmond's going to have a hard dip at this year's draft. And if they do finish, say, in the bottom five, there are some pretty top-end midfield prospects for them to pick from this year. So if, if this year doesn't go to plan and they end up with a Jagger Smith or a uh, Josh Smilly or any number of young midfielders in that top five, it does change the, the dynamic of this team. And uh, But that's, that being said, the, the point of this exercise is, is not to try and predict exactly what it is. It's just looking at their gaps. And we know that Richmond, to some extent, are a bit of a blank canvas I'm happy with their key back situation. Uh, they seem to have depth of, of forward options that are not tall, but they need some key forwards. The ruck situation's okay. They've got them on the list, and I think Samson Ryan looks like a good one, even though they lost Soldo. They've at least got prospects there, and they can just backfill from behind that. And, and midfield talent, particularly top-end midfield talent, because in three years, if we're trying to predict where this team's going to be, a lot of players either side of their prime, which makes this awkward. And I do think Richmond are going to have to embrace a complete refreshing of this list and getting younger players in and getting younger. And I do think they will probably have to embrace a rebuild, to be honest. I could be wrong, though. Teams have proven us wrong. We've been saying that about Geelong. Uh, but I think it's in be Richmond's best interest to try and get some high draft picks, even if it's just for a year or two. So we'll see what happens. But anyway, guys, that's just my take on Richmond in three years. Obviously, that team needs a little bit of work, respectfully. Um, only because there's so many speculative talents there. And um, we don't know if they're any good. And I could be wrong. You know, Sam Banks could be become a... A grade wingman. Tom Brown could be an All Australian defender in three years. Who knows? But it's just we're playing the probabilities here, and I think it's clear they need an injection of talent. But 
We'll see. I'm going to be watching him closely. I, I like to pick clubs who are an interesting list management case study. Richmond and Geelong are the two who I'm looking at wondering how, how are they going to transition out of this particular phase. But anyway, uh, I, I look forward to your input, Richmond fans in particular, but also anyone from the outside as well. Um, I'm enjoying this series, so let me know any feedback. Uh, obviously, I'm ignorant to a bunch of these prospects as well. So you guys letting me know what I got right or what I got wrong does help me get better at what I do. So I look forward to hearing from you. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.